Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV, and today I'm going to be showing you through the New Camp Boondock Light Tab 320. So come along. So starting right down here on the front, how to hook this guy up to your trailer or uh, to your tow vehicle. You're going to have your coupler here. To get this thing to latch, you're just going to back your tow ball underneath it, lower it down with your crank, lift up here, and push that forward until it latches down on the ball. And you'll see these ears right here on the latch. Make sure they get all the way down into that slot and that's good to release it. Um, all you're gonna do is pick up and pull up and back on the coupler lock and that's gonna release it. To finish the setup of getting you hooked up to your tow vehicle, you're gonna plug in your standard seven way here for a trailer. It's gonna provide all your lights, turn signals and brake application to the trailer. And we've got your safety chains. These are gonna be clipped to your tow vehicle as well. And last but not least, we're gonna have your safety breakaway cable that's gonna be attached to your tow vehicle. This is just in case you get uh, disconnected from your tow vehicle. This is gonna pull out of this little box that's mounted back here in the frame and apply the brakes on the trailer. Cool replacement for this cable because this thing really has no way of hooking up to the tow vehicle is to put a uh, zip cord on it. Uh, it's a pretty cool uh, cheap add-on device. Uh, to use your tongue jack, all it is is a crank up and down here on the tongue. And moving inside here, we've got your uh, battery and your LP cylinder for your propane. Um, on your battery, you can use either an AGM or an, a standard lead acid. It comes prepped with a standard lead acid wet battery that does need to be serviced. Uh, so it just needs to be topped off with distilled water. So check it periodically um, as you're plugged in at least, uh, you know, four times a year is probably a good, good rate on that. Hooked up to the battery are going to be these sets of wires. There is a 30 amp fuse on here. This is just a standard blade type fuse that you would find um, in a car or at an auto parts store if you do need a replacement. Last thing on the battery is going to be our battery disconnect switch here. You can see we've got a green and red on this side when it's disconnected. So green when, we're, when we are in use, turn it and disconnect it to the red when you're putting it in storage or you're just not gonna be using it for a while. That's gonna help prolong the life of your battery. On your propane cylinder, uh, it's a single 20 pound cylinder. Uh, pretty simple use, you can either refill it or have it replaced, uh, do an exchange on it at an exchange location. Uh, it will come filled, completely topped off, ready to go. Uh, to remove this cylinder from your trailer for service, all you're gonna do is loosen up the wing nut down here. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, somebody's got that on there really tight. All right, loosen up your wing nut. And remove the cylinder. Once this is out, you can put it in your vehicle. Do remember that it always needs to be kept in the upright position. Do not ever let it lay on its side. Always in the upright position. Once you get it exchanged or refilled, putting it back in just the opposite, we're just gonna put it back into the clamp. We're gonna reconnect our gas line. Just like that and tighten up the wing nut on the clamp. Once that's done, that's about it. To secure the lid on your cover, just pull it down. Use your little bungee straps on each side and that's it. Up on the front here, you do have some locations for storage. This is a generator rack, fits a uh, nice 2000 watt uh, generator, fits here real nice. The sides can be stored with small totes to put things in like water hoses, sewer hoses, uh, small lightweight items to store up on the front. That about covers the front of the trailer, so let's move over here onto the side. This is on our off-door side of the trailer. Uh, starting up here, just on the sidewall, we're gonna have a few things. We've got a uh, radio antenna, got a cable hookup. So this is gonna be a good place to hook up a park satellite uh, or cable or an actual antenna for your TV. Uh, this is gonna be a plumbing vent. 
And moving down from there, we've got your freshwater fill. This is where you're gonna, all you do to get this open is it push down here at the bottom, it's gonna pop open. Uh, all you do to fill this up is to put your water hose in there, turn the water on until it gushes back out. That fills your onboard tank. To close it, just kind of give it a quick pop and it's gonna close. Just below that, we've got your city water connection. This is where we're gonna hook up when we have access to um, a city water connection or a hose bib or whatever you'd like to call it where you can hook a water hose up and connect it straight on. Uh, this is gonna automatically pressurize your system and provide water. Uh, <laughs> freaking pump ran, did you hear that? Yeah, uh, just making sure that was the pump. It wasn't me. <laughs> Oh, do we need to do that whole bit over? Just start right there. Okay. So this is your city water connection. This is where you're going to hook up your water hose when you have access to a, a, a hose. Uh, why can I not spit this out of my mouth? Okay. This is going to be your city water connection where you can hook up with your uh, water hose. It's going to automatically provide pressure to the uh, trailer once you get it turned on through the water hose. Uh, do make sure you are running some type of pressure regulator. One's going to provide be provided to you with the trailer. Uh, it's about a 40 to 45 PSI. Your max here per new camp is 50. Uh, they do make adjustables. They make some that are, um, you know, 50 to 55 PSI, get you a little more volume. Um, some people really like to get as much water as they can into these trailers. And moving down from there, just underneath the trailer here, uh, kind of on the front left or the front off door side, you'll find your dump station. This is going to be where we're going to dump your black and gray tanks. Um, on the right is going to be your larger valve with a black handle. That's going to be for your black water, which is your toilet water. And on the left is going to be our smaller valve with a gray handle. That's going to be for our gray water, which will be sink and shower. All you do is take the cap off, hook your sewer hose up to it. Uh, we're going to start by dumping our gray water, or our black water, excuse me. When it's done, close the valve open the gray and let it drain. That's going to help rinse that hose out. Make sure we get everything kind of moved out of there. Um, on your stabilizers, there's going to be one in each corner on this trailer. It's got the drive right here. You do have a crank handle that's pretty long so you can access the rear ones. These are just stabilizers. They're just going to be run down to the ground and snugged up. They are not used to level or lift the trailer in any shape, way, shape or form. Moving over from there, uh, we've got a uh, tire and loading information sticker. This is going to be tire sizes, tire pressures, and then also it tells you what your full tank of water weighs so you can do the math and figure out, um, you know, how much weight you can actually put in the trailer. Moving over from there, we've got your wheel and tire. Uh, so do make sure you are checking your lug nut torque specs on these regularly, especially um, before each trip is a good idea. Last thing you want to do is get out on the road and have a lug nut or multiple lug nuts fall off and allow that whole wheel and tire to come off, ruin your vacation. Easy, easy check, 100, 100 foot pounds on the torque and uh, you'll be good to go. 30 amp uh, power connection, real simple hookup here. On our uh, plug, we're gonna see that we have three prongs. One of them's kind of an L shape. All we're going to do is match that L-shaped prong up to the one in the receiver on the trailer. Just like that. Give it a, a little twist to the right. That's going to lock it on and then we're going to use the lock ring on the cord to secure it to the trailer. That way if you accidentally trip on it or anything, um, it doesn't come unplugged or it doesn't come loose or anything like that. And you don't lose power at unsuspecting times. Right next to that we've got our outdoor shower to get that open. Just pull down on that latch, it's spring loaded. It's gonna allow it to come open. And door in there, we're gonna find our shower. Hot and cold water. All you gotta do is turn those knobs on to and set your temperature however you want it. And to use the shower, all you're gonna do is push down on the lever, and that's gonna lock it on. To release it, just push down on it here. Push down on the head of it there, and that'll allow it to shut off. To store it, just fish your uh, hose back in through the hole. And the head's gonna fit specifically into that location right there, and then just close it. This is gonna be your Aldi exhaust uh, vent for your Aldi system, which is gonna be your water heater and your uh, heater system in this trailer. So just make sure that you're not putting anything over it. Cautious when you're using it, this does get uh, somewhat warm, and we don't want you to get burned. 
Okay, guys, and then just a kind of quick uh, note on the uh, back end of uh, your, your tab 320, we're going to find your spare tire mounted underneath. It's just got two lug nuts mounted underneath, same size that you would use to remove your tire from your trailer if you needed to. Um, it just comes, it just drops down, and that's it. So some people do like to relocate these. It gets a little more difficult with these trailers with that generator basket on the front, but there are ideas out there. Uh, this trailer also comes with a set of... Uh, leveling blocks. Uh, really, New Camp provided these with the trailer because it's such a long way to the ground with our stabilizers that you can use these to uh, place under the stabilizer, as you can see there, to reach the ground. Moving on to our door side of the trailer here, we've got exterior 110 outlets for plugging in pretty much anything that's 110 and you can see that they are GFCI uh, so this is a considered a wet location so these can trip if it trips it will knock out power so you will just need to check that and reset it this mount right here is going to allow you to uh, move your lagoon table from the inside to the outside and mount it out here for you to do things on the outside uh, at the door our entry step real simple pull it out latches in place push it in and it stays there for travel. To get our door to latch is gonna be this setup right here. All you're gonna do is push this back until you feel it kind of pop and that's latched in and that's gonna hold it there to get it to release. Just give it a little tug and that's gonna release it. These two vents right here are gonna be for access to your refrigerator cooling unit. There is not a whole lot in here for customer use. Uh, it is more of a service uh, check kind of thing. But, you know, if you ever want to open these up, check for bugs or anything like that that may be causing issues, you can open them up and take a peek. Other than that, it's more for service stuff. To uh, get these off is going to be these little lock tabs right here. They just twist. When it's, when it's uh, twisted this way, it's locked. When it's up and down, it's unlocked, which will allow it to be removed from the trailer. So make sure that if you take it off, that you do get these latched back in, because uh, the wind will blow these off if they are not put on correctly. That pretty much covers the outside of our TAP 320, so let's go check out the inside. All right, so the, on the inside of our door, I'm gonna have a couple things here. First is gonna be our latch for the door. Uh, you'll see the, the red and green lines here when their lever is all the way up. That's actually going to deadbolt our door or lock our door, allow, um, keep it from being accessed from the exterior. If it's just dead center, that's going to be unlocked so you can access it from the outside. And to get out from the inside, all you're going to do is push down on it. And that's going to pull your latch in and allow you to push the door open. Uh, a couple other things. We've got your fire extinguisher here. Biggest thing about the fire extinguisher, check it periodically. little green tab on the top. All you're gonna do is push that down and you wanna make sure it pops back up. If it doesn't, this uh, fire extinguisher no longer has pressure inside and wouldn't do you any good in a fire. Got your little uh, storage bin here that you can uh, store some trash in or anything else that you'd like to find like Clint's daughter's drawings. Um, we've got some uh, storage cords and in our little porthole window in the door, we do have um, a shade there so you can close that off so you can uh, get some privacy, block light, whatever you would be looking to do with that. On the inside of the trailer, a couple things here. We've got your uh, two burner cooktop. So to get this thing to light, um, all you're gonna do is turn this knob here. And you'll see that it's got a, like a electric bolt and then you've got like a big flame and a little flame. So you're gonna wanna turn that to like the electric bolt and it lines up with this little dimple right here. And all you're going to do is push and hold that in and that's going to allow the gas flow out of whichever burner you're trying to light and you're going to have to use a stick lighter or a match or whatever you'd like to use to light it get it lit once it's lit continue to hold that button down for about another five to ten seconds and then you can release it and your flame should sustain on itself um, once you're done cooking turn it to the off i do recommend letting these cool before you close your cooktop because this is glass we don't want anything to like uh, overheat or anything like that and cause this thing to break. Moving over from there, we've got your kitchen sink. 
Comes with the uh, tab sink cover, which fits real nice in here. Uh, doesn't bounce around, but gives you some extra workspace while you're working up here. So you can just take that and remove it out of the way. Now to use your faucet, uh, it's gonna have your lever here. It's got two, two different ways this lever can move. It can move in and out like this, and it can move back and forth this way. This in and out is gonna be pressure and back and forth is gonna be temperature. So you'll see that you've got a blue mark here. On the back side, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a red mark. So if your paddle is all the way back, it's gonna be hot. If it's all the way forward, it's gonna be cold. And then you can adjust your spray angle by moving your head. Moving over from there, we've got your monitor panel with water pump control. This uh, but switch right here is for the water pump. If you turn that on, you'll see that the uh, little red light right there that says pump comes on. Um, and this thing will build pressure off of the um, water in the tank that you stored on board if you're gonna be dry camping or just need to use water while you're traveling down the road and don't have access to a water hose. Uh, so you would just turn that on and use it as normal. When you're done, flip it off and you're good to go. And you'll see here we've got battery fresh black and gray uh, levels. So to check these, you're gonna use these LED lights right up here, so battery, Fresh, we have no water in it. Black, we have no black. And gray, we have no gray. Now these would change depending on your levels. Just above that, you're gonna find a 110 outlet up here. And you can use that obviously for, you know, probably a coffee pot or anything else that somebody may wanna put up here. Moving up from there, we've got your Jensen radio. Uh, this is gonna be your, kind of your entertainment center. This is gonna uh, play DVDs to your um, TV, uh, play music, all that good stuff. You can pair your phone with it, Bluetooth settings, play music. Got lots of cool features. Read up on it, has a lot of stuff. Just underneath that, we've got a light for your cooking area and your sink area. Uh, just has a push button on it to use it, and it is a two step brightness. Just above that, we've got storage. Not a whole lot in there. These just pull open, push closed. And <clears throat> Moving back down, below that we've got your Norcold uh, three-way refrigerator. Uh, so don't let this overwhelm you when people start talking three-way and things like this. It's very simple. You want to use the electric or the gas version and try to not have to use battery. Uh, battery will run your battery dead on your tow vehicle as well as your trailer even while you're in tow. So it is recommended to run it on the propane or the electric side, obviously electric while you're camping. Uh, so to use it, you're just going to, first knob here is going to be your mode selector. So this is just the off position. When it actually shows you the power sign, that's the off position. So from there, you're just going to select your mode. First one being gas. Second one being electric. Third one being battery. Just follow your symbols. Uh, from there, you're going to choose your, um, you can choose your uh, coldness setting. Uh, so you've got, you know, one snowflake, two snowflake, three snowflakes, obviously three being your coldest. And so you just find somewhere in between. And this is also considered a, um, a power knob for this thing. So this is going to turn it off here as well. If you're going to run it on gas. So you're going to first you're going to turn your mode to gas. You're going to take your so this temp knob over here is for your gas control only. You're going to select gas. This knob over here right here pushes in, so you're going to push and hold it in, and you're going to use the sparker here. And you're going to keep pushing the sparker until you see this gauge move to green. And once it moves to green, you want to continue to push and hold your gas temp knob in for 10 seconds. When you let off, that gauge should stay in the green. If it drops off, push that back in, continue to hold it a little bit longer. Basically, you wanna be able to let off of that and the gauge stay in the green. Once that's all good, choose your temp and you're good to go. And that pretty much covers your refrigerator. But here's the inside of it so you can kinda of see what it looks like. Uh, this is gonna be your cooling unit over here, these fins. This is gonna, so it's gonna more or less, if you'll picture this, it's gonna cool from right to left because your cooling unit is on this side. So just keep that in mind as you stack it, don't overpack it or anything like that. Uh, at your entry door, 
has a screen door as well uh, for you so you can uh, open it up but keep the bugs out. While we're talking about screens, we'll talk about your windows. All of your windows in this trailer operate the same way. Uh, some of them just have more latches than other. And I will show you how these work. All right. So we've got latches, four latches on here. Two of them just rotate. The bottom two have these red buttons. So what you have to do here is you have to actually push the button in that'll allow you to rotate that knob. Once you get it open, push it out, choose how far you'd like it out, and then you're gonna use these knobs, and you're just gonna lock those struts, and that's gonna hold the window in the open position. When you'd like to close it, do support the window before you take the knobs loose or it will slam shut. Just take them loose, let it in slowly, and then relatch it all. Uh, they do have a vent position on these windows, which is this middle slot that you'll see on all of your latches. So this middle slot right here, so this is your normal latch position out here. And this is your vent position here. This is gonna crack the window just enough to allow some fresh air in. Really good to use in like a rainy situation, but you don't wanna run the air conditioner or something like that. So that works well. Now to use your shades, you got a day night shade here. So this is kind of a bug screen slash day shade. It's gonna allow good natural lighting in, but it's gonna keep your bugs out while you have the window open. And when you get ready to go to bed, if you still wanna keep them open, you just pull it up and that's gonna give you your nightshade. It's gonna black everything out and it's gonna keep anybody from being able to see in. To release these two shades from being latched together, all you're gonna do is pull out lightly on this clip and that's gonna allow your shades to separate. Underneath your sink, we just have some storage. You'll see an electrical outlet way back here in the back. That's going to be for your refrigerator. Make sure you don't accidentally unplug that while you're in here loading and unloading things because then it won't work. Uh, and then just storage. And again, be cautious of any plumbing or anything like that that's in here so you don't uh, damage or break anything and cause any issues for yourself while you're out enjoying your trailer. Underneath the refrigerator, little storage drawer. Put whatever you'd like in it to use this latch. All you're gonna do is, if it's in the end position, push it, that's gonna unlatch it. You can see the little latch moving there. Allow you to open and close the drawer. And that latches it shut. So moving over from there, we're gonna move into your shower slash bathroom slash do it all. Um, so the way everything works in here, first we've got your toilet. So to use your toilet, there's a lever right here on the back. And if you pull it halfway, that's gonna give you just water in the bowl. When you pull it all the way, that's gonna open the blade valve and allow everything in there to uh, you know, go to its respective tank. So what you wanna do is fill it up about halfway, do what you need to do, and then dump it. Uh, you also need to make sure you're using some type of uh, black tank treatment to help break down waste particles and keep everything moving out nice and free. We've got your toilet paper holder right here. It's got a lid on it, keeps it nice and dry uh, while you're showering. Here's your shower. Hot and cold water operates just like any other shower. And we've got your uh, flow, uh, flow control right here. So one way is going to be water flow, one's going to pretty much limit the water flow. And then this shower head is adjustable so you can, uh, you know, choose your little spray pattern as you would like it. On your porthole window, all you got to do is rotate the inside panel. And that's going to be open, close, and that's it on that. This little compartment that's behind the toilet is going to be where your water pump is. Um, it's more of a service area for uh, servicing, but that's what you'll find in there is a water pump uh, along with some other plumbing if you never need it in there. To use the light on this guy, all you're going to do is push that little button that's on there and that's going to turn it on and off. This uh, door is held closed with a magnet that helps keep it closed while you are using it. It is not to be uh, relied upon for travel. 
That's why they've got a lock knob here for your handle, uh, for your shower door. All you gotta do is rotate it so it's down in front of the door and so your door doesn't swing open while you're traveling. Moving over from there, we've got your TV. All right, your TV is held in place with a bungee cord. So to release it, you're gonna want to pull some slack down on it this way, and then just pull it up and out of that loop that's at the bottom there, and then swing it out of the way, and that's gonna give you access to your TV. And your TV can be pulled out and swung around, so you can watch this from any pretty much location in this trailer. Uh, if you want to use the onboard controls, they're all right here on the back side. This thing does come equipped with um, all of the fittings and, you know, things that you can hook up remotely to it, HDMI, all that good stuff. And this, this TV is 12 volt powered, so this TV can be watched while you're dry camping. If you don't have access to 110, but you want to catch some TV, you've got it covered um, on that guy. Just above your TV, we'll find your Aldi and your Air 8 control panels. So your Aldi one is on the right. It's the silver colored one. This is going to be to control your water heater and furnace. So to turn it on, you're just going to hit the power button and give it a second to boot up. Now there is a lot that these controllers can do. I do highly recommend reading the owner's manuals on them or even looking up videos on YouTube. There's a lot of good information on these. Uh, to choose what you're going to do, you're going to hit the menu button and you're going to see these icons. Top one's going to be a house with a thermostat in it. That's going to be your room temperature. Below that, we see a shower. This is going to be for like a boost. And then we see electric and then we see gas. So these are going to be your operational modes of whether you're going to run your Aldi system on electric, the electricity bolt, or gas being run on LP gas. So you would just choose your selection there. If you're going to be doing some showering, you can boost this all the way up and basically that's going to increase the output of your hot water so you can take more showers. Room temperatures, the top one, all you're going to do is choose where you would like your room temperature to be and that's where your Aldi system is always going to try to maintain to. So if you don't want it to come on, all you got to do is bottom that thermostat out down to 41 degrees and it won't come on until it reaches 41 degrees in here. There are, like I said, a lot of other things that the Aldi system can do, so do check on that, but that's going to be your basic operations. So on your Air 8 control, this is going to be for your air conditioner. You see right here in the middle, we've got your power button. To the left of that, we've got a fan button. And then we, on the far left and far right, is going to be a positive and negative. That's going to be for your temperature. So all you got to do is turn that guy on. You're going to choose your, so this triangle one's going to be your mode select. And you have the snowflake, which is cool, fan, which is fan only, the teardrop, which is gonna be like a dehumidifier. And then we've got fan speed, low, medium, and high, and then uh, recirculate. So you just gotta choose your temperature, and this thing will cool you off to that temperature. If you just wanna run the fan, just choose fan. Again, there are timers and things that this can do. Uh, I do highly recommend that you read the owner's manual on this and also look for videos online about how to use these because there's just really good stuff that unfortunately I don't have time to get into. Turn off. All these little black round vents that are located around the trailer, those are going to be the vents for the Air 8 air conditioning system. So the Aldi radiator heat's actually going to come out of this little slit right here. There's a little radiator back there. So as it pumps that hot coolant uh, through there, it'll come out of these little vents at the top and the bottom of the floor. Let's talk about your uh, vent fan. Pretty easy operation. All you gotta do is open this thing up. Choose whether you want your air to be pulled out or pulled in. And then choose your fan speed. You got a three speed fan speed. And then you can choose which way you would like the fan to operate. When you're done, just close it down and make sure it is closed for travel as well. Uh, just above our TV, you do have a storage cabinet. That's all that's going to be in here is just for storage, fit whatever you'd like in there. It is held closed with a latch here. Just closes like that and pulls open that way. Just to the left of that, we're going to find our smoke alarm. 9 volt powered, same style smoke alarm that you would find in your home. Do check the 9 volt and do test it periodically. And this is also a little rack right here that you can store stuff in. 
Again, your window and screen operation is just like all the other window and screens uh, that we showed at the front of the trailer. Moving down just below our bench, we've got a couple other things. First here, we're gonna have our LPCO alarm. This is gonna detect a LP gas or CO leak um, that, that may occur. Green lights just for normal operation. You'll get some other lights here if it detects anything as well as a loud beeping noise. That's quite annoying. And it is designed to be that way so you'll wake up. Moving over from there, we've got another GFCI outlet, red and white buttons, test and trip. Um, just a standard 110 outlet other than that. And then over from there, we've got your WFCO power distribution panel. Uh, this is gonna be how all the power is distributed through the trailer. We've got your 110 breakers and we've got your 12 volt fuses. So if you have any power issues going on, this is gonna be your first place to check. Check your breakers, check your fuses, make sure everything is good in there. If not, give us a call and we'll see if we can help you out if it's something simple. Moving to the uh, backside here, uh, to kind of lay this thing down into a couch or into a bed, excuse me, the first thing we're gonna need to do is remove these two side cushions. All we're gonna do is pull them off the wall. They are Velcroed. And then you're gonna grab this. It does have a pull uh, right here. All you're gonna do is pull it forward all the way till you hear it click, click. And that's gonna be released. So now you can lay this thing flat. So once you get that down, you'll find a couple other things back here. You've got a headboard uh, where you can keep some things uh, while you're laid down. You've got your owner's manual from New Camp as well as your remotes for your radio and your TV. And there welcome box with, uh, with a couple of goodies in it. On the left over here, you do have another 110 outlet to plug things in there. And then on the right, you've got a 12 volt accessory outlet with two USB ports that you can use for charging devices or running any kind of 12 volt stuff. On the back wall, just above that, we've got your three storage cabinets to store whatever you would prefer in them. On the left and right, we have um, a reading light as well as your speaker. Reading light is controlled with the push button on top. All you gotta do is turn it on and off in that manner, whichever you would like to do with it. Now, for the fun part of setting this thing up the rest of the way for a bed, I've already got your lagoon table removed. I'll show you how to uh, install that and remove it here in just a second. But let's do this bed first. These slats are normally stored under the bench here. And once we get them unvelcroed, this is going to lay in here. Like a so. So this will reach the whole distance. You want one slat behind these clips and the other slat behind those clips. Once that's done, your cushions slide down. And we have your bed. Pretty simple process, not, not too difficult. Um, the reverse is going to be how we put it up. So first off, we're going to take our cushions and push them up. Take our slats. We Velcro them. I'm going to go ahead and store these out of the way back here where they are stored. Pull our uh, couch back back into position. Just grab your pull loop. You're going to pull it up until it let you hear it latch in place. So that's down. Now this does have a couple of different positions. If you don't want to sit upright, you can put it there. Or, or you can put it there. <laughs> put your side cushions back in place. And you've made yourself back into your uh living room now to put your lagoon table in and out it's going to be your main post uh, this is going to slide down onto this bracket right here 
All you got to do is line it up. All you got to do is slide it down. So this is height adjustable, so you can choose your height as to where you like it. Once you find a position that's somewhat close, you use the bottom knob to lock it in place. Now these knobs can rotate. If you push in on this button, it allows you to pull the handle out. So you can rotate that without actually tightening or loosening anything. So if you don't like the position of it, just push there and kind of rotate that around and you can find a different position. Now to set the top on, it's just gonna slide down over this post like that, you know, and you can leave it loose to rotate it or you can snug it down into a position to where it doesn't rotate. And that's totally up to you how you would like to store it. So inside on the door side of our trailer, just the last couple of things here to cover. You do have another little storage pocket right here. And we've got two switches, our ceiling light, which is going to be our main light right up here over the uh, entryway. And we've got our porch light, which is going to control the porch light on the outside of the unit. Um, that pretty much covers your boondock light tap 320, but if you do have any questions, do not hesitate to give Princess Craft a call.